This is Block 9, the Liberal Establishment, Section 2, Camelot, with the section beginning the EEC. As soon as I call up the whole slide, the EEC. The EEC was a free trade area of Western Europe. As the European economies were um, recovering and undergoing this economic miracle of the post-war decades, the United States kind of encouraged uh, the Western European countries, you know, those backed by Marshall Aid uh, Plan, the United States backed these countries to kind of create uh, what was known as a, um, a free trade zone. Or, and they called it the EEC, the European Economic Community. And it was made up of West Germany, the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, France, and Italy. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six countries, six countries, and what they did um, was they abolished all tariff barriers uh, between them, that you could now uh, trade freely, it's called a customs union, um, you could now trade freely without having really to check your papers or documents in between these six countries. So a firm in Germany could completely have free trade with a company in France, that a company in France could do business with citizens of Italy without having to pay any sort of customs dues, uh, tariffs, taxes, or anything like that. Eventually, the EEC is the first step in what would become the European Union. Uh, which, you know, many of you I'm sure are familiar with. Um, anyone who's been to Spain or Portugal knows all about the EU. The EU starts as the EEC, the European Economic uh, com um, Community, which was encouraged by President Kennedy um, to get the European countries on a faster growth rate, to encourage trade between them. Um, Kennedy then took advantage of the EEC by passing what was known as the Trade Expansion Act of 1962. Uh, and that encouraged the EEC and the United States to trade with each other. That tariffs between the United States and these six countries of the EEC uh, were lowered, which created more trade between the United States and Europe. American trade was increasing uh, with lots of countries, not just Europe, uh, but with the entire world. Uh, trade with Japan is beginning to take off again in the post-war um, era trade with the newly independent countries of Asia and uh, Africa. Latin America continues to trade with the United States. In the 1960s, trade is becoming very, very interconnected again, in a way it was not since before World War I. Transportation is getting easier. Jet um, Passenger jets come into vogue in the late in the 1950s and 1960s. Businessmen now can easily travel to Europe from New York from Asia, from uh, the West Coast, from Europe to America, without having to get on a ship and sailing across the ocean. Long distance telephoning became more, uh, more and more popular, easier and easier, and cheaper and cheaper. The fax machine was invented in the 1960s, allowing people to send documents over the phone line, uh, and all of these things, you know, from political moves to new technologies, uh, to the political will uh, and the peace uh, that was being, you know, held together by the United States and their nuclear umbrella, all of these things helped make international trade a larger percentage of the world economy uh, than it had been since before World War I. Um, and all of this trade, trade is good for, every, you know, trade is good for nations, it's not good for every single person. Uh, but international trade is good for countries, it's good for the majority of people in countries, uh, and just the continuing economic boom of the 1960s, a large part of that was the ever-increasing amount of foreign trade uh, in a process that was known as globalization, that the globe was connected, that the United States and Europe were connected, Asia was beginning to be connected, even Africa was beginning to be connected uh, in this new web of technology and trade uh, that still very much so defines the economic world today.